last year, at a village called Kaunji in Burma, now Myanmar, there was a storm. Now, Myanmar is no stranger to extreme weather. Droughts, floods, cyclones, this country gets it all. But even by Myanmar standards, this storm was pretty crazy. Massive hailstones came pelting down. At the end of it, the village was a mess. Almost every roof had been ripped off or damaged. Even some goats had been killed. After it was over, the villagers took a deep breath and began figuring out how to get some help. But then, suddenly, Within one hour, help arrives, and it keeps coming. Over the next few days, more than 100 groups show up with rice and money. Even this guy, a famous movie star, comes to help. How did this happen? Well, after the storm, a few of the young kids in the village uploaded pictures to Facebook. The pictures went viral, and people around the country sprung into action. Now, in many ways, this is a cool story, a classic TED story. But on the other hand, really? Here we are, living in a world where Extreme weather events like this already happen all the time, and they're going to happen even more. And the best tech tool we have is Facebook. We live in a world full of really serious problems. And what are our best minds in technology working on? Apps with funny filters. Subscription toothbrushes. $400 machines that squeeze packets of juice slower than you can with your own hands. <laughs> For many years, we've talked about the potential of technology to improve the lives of people around the world. Now, obviously, technology is not a panacea. But it is true. The potential is enormous, especially today. Technology has never been faster, never been smarter, and never been cheaper. And yet we've failed to come up with solutions for even a fraction of the challenges we face. There's a few good examples, but nowhere near what we need the reasons for this are pretty well known. The things that are problems in Silicon Valley and other big tech centers aren't the same problems that people face in the poorest parts of the world. The real problem is that the smartest minds in technology are not working on the most important problems. But here's the thing. In developing countries, technology could be transformative in ways that it almost never is in developed countries. It's nice to get your taxi five minutes faster, especially when it's raining outside. But imagine you're a poor farmer struggling to feed your family, and that tropical rain is washing away all your crops, your entire livelihood. It could change your life if you could use your smartphone to buy micro-insurance. Silicon Valley's problem problem isn't just a problem. It's a massive missed opportunity. As many shampoo companies and microfinance organizations have already shown, there's great business to be done meeting the needs of people who live outside the rich world. In many ways, technology companies are even better positioned to tap, tap into this 
fortune at the bottom of the pyramid. Digital products like mobile money don't care about rough roads and bad weather. So this is an exciting opportunity. Technology could be used to really improve people's lives and to build successful businesses. The question is, how would you seize this opportunity? Now, that's a big question. But I think that part of the answer is to really get out into these places. Wouldn't it be great to really spend time understanding what the serious problems are facing the next billion, and then build solutions to those problems? So what if you were serious about this? Where would you start? Ideally, you'd want to go somewhere where not only could technology have a big impact, but where whatever you develop could potentially be used elsewhere. Well, what about that place that used Facebook as a disaster response system? Myanmar, super interesting country. After five decades of military rule, it's finally opening up. Myanmar has a lot in common with other countries where technology could potentially be transformative. Conflict and a lack of democracy have held the country back. Decades of underinvestment mean that infrastructure and health and education systems need a ton of work. There's been an over-reliance on natural resources, and the economy is still largely agriculture-based. But there's one way in which this country differs from these other countries. Myanmar is in the midst of a connectivity revolution. For a long time, the country used to have rates of mobile and internet penetration lower than even North Korea. It's no mystery why. When I moved to Myanmar five years ago, my SIM card cost $250. But then, the country opened up its telecommunications market. Suddenly, SIM cards were just $1.50, and almost overnight, Myanmar came online. Indeed, no other country in history has gone so quickly from being almost completely disconnected to almost completely connected. And it's not just any form of connectivity. Myanmar has leapfrogged straight to smartphones and data. There's now more active SIM cards than people in Myanmar. <laughs> Most of those SIM cards are in smartphones because smartphones are dirt cheap. I bought this one just the other day for $23. The speed of adoption is breathtaking. The messaging app Viber already has 37 million registered users. Facebook, 15 million. Video streaming services like Netflix and iFlix are in-country. So too are ride-hailing giants like Uber and Grab Taxi. Myanmar may have been late to the internet party, but it's tearing up the dance floor now. Now, Myanmar is obviously not the first developing country to discover mobile phones. Why does this leapfrog to smartphones and data matter? Well, there's a massive difference between smartphones and those old-school mobiles. These things are powerful, really powerful. Even this $23 smartphone has more power than the computer that put the first man on the moon. So imagine that you wanted to figure out how to use smartphones to help people when the health system is really weak, or how you could use mobile data to improve kids' educational experiences, or maybe how government could use smartphones to better serve its people. The ubiquity of smartphones in Myanmar makes it a great place to test these ideas. And here's the big thing. 
tech products that solve big problems in Myanmar could potentially be used to solve similar problems in other developing countries. Myanmar may well be the best test market in the world for bottom of the pyramid tech solutions. Now this might seem counterintuitive. Normally with Myanmar, people look from the outside in. Oh, Myanmar should do what this country did. Oh, Myanmar should learn from this country. But this is one way in which Myanmar is ahead of every single other developing country. Look at this chart. This chart compares countries' smartphone penetration rates based on the purchasing powers of their citizens. The percentage of phones in Myanmar that are smartphones is way, way higher than any other developing country where people have similar purchasing powers. And it's even ahead of countries that are much, much richer, like Thailand and China. Myanmar is ideally placed to do a digital leapfrog. It could use technology to jump ahead, to accelerate growth and development. And what's exciting for the rest of the world is that smart, simple, low-cost tech products that are tested and succeed here could potentially be used by these other countries when they catch up with Myanmar. Myanmar used to be the rice bowl of Asia. But what if the new Myanmar was serving up more than just rice? What if the new Myanmar was cooking up cool tech solutions for other developing countries? Myanmar could be the tech test kitchen for the next billion. Right now, it's early days in the world's best bottom of the pyramid tech test market, but already we can catch a glimpse of the potential. There's a fintech company that's leveraging smartphones to provide protection to Myanmar's most vulnerable people from the many shocks they face, like that crazy hailstorm back in Kaunji. There's an edtech project that's using the mobile network infrastructure to live broadcast high quality teaching to schools that serve underprivileged children in the most remote parts of the country. Hundreds of thousands of people used a civic tech app to get critical information to participate in the country's historic elections in 2015. But my favorite example is a maternal and child health app called Maymay. Mums and young kids face tough odds in Myanmar. The country has the worst maternal mortality rate and the worst under five mortality rate of any country in Southeast Asia. Now, trying to use mobile phones to help pregnant women is not new, but there's a massive difference between what you can do with a smartphone and those old school mobiles. Watching a video, engaging with interactive content on a touch screen, chatting with other pregnant women, using location services to get emergency help. These are much richer, more powerful experiences than just getting a text message or a voice recorded message. All of these products are tackling problems that exist not just in Myanmar. If these products can be effective here, then there's potential to take them or at the very least the learnings from them to other places where they could have a big impact. As I said, it's early days in the world's best tech test market. The golden land is not the Silicon Pagoda just yet. But already there's some insights to be gleaned. So what can we learn? Firstly, we should focus on big, important problems. Every day, around the world, 830 women die 
during childbirth or from complications with their pregnancy. If technology could be used to drive down these numbers, that would genuinely make the world a better place. Secondly, we can see the value of developing solutions with users. The latest version of Maymay is almost completely different to the version that launched in 2015. The improvements are the results of literally thousands of interviews that the company, which is based in Yangon, not Silicon Valley, has conducted with mums. Thirdly, partnerships really help. The only reason that election app got so many users in less than one month was that hundreds of civic education volunteers were running around the country sharing it with voters. Finally, we always need to remember, it's not about the tech. Many people think all you need to do is just build an app. That's probably the easiest part. In developing markets, it's especially important to think through all the challenges, distribution, updates, payments, getting quality feedback from your users. No doubt there will be many more insights to be learned from Myanmar in the coming years. But already we can see how important this work could be and how much could be learned in this market. So think about it. If you want to do really cool things with technology or have a big impact on the world, or ideally both, dream big. Use your skills to build technology products that solve the world's most pressing problems. And when you do, start in the world's best tech test market, Myanmar. <laughs>